here for all of you youngsters, England's Dave Clark Five with ASCAP's Glad All Over. So let's hear that. Come on, come on. to a quarter of a million people at one show. I mean, it was just phenomenal. The whole thing just took off. Big Dog Five for Christ's sake, but it's well known as the English Dictionary. Come on! successful on our own individual style. I mean, the DC-5 music was to be enjoyed. It was purely fun. To induct the Dave Clark Five into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, please welcome Tom Hanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're going to try to do this fast since these next fellas did everything they wanted. In three minutes or less. Okay, now say you are a kid living in an odyssey of rental houses and relative sofa beds and cheap but clean apartments. Uh, your family history and that of the world is swirling around you, making your first decade no walk in the park for anyone and even crazier Ted year. So, you attach yourself to popular culture seeking distraction from your day. KYA 1260 and KEWB Channel 91 blare from a speaker the size of the bottom of a soda can on your sister's clock radio, connecting you to a world beyond that cheap but clean rental apartment. You become a participant in the moment by moment edge of the bunk bed drama of waiting for the next song. Suffering through the commercial jingles, the station IDs, longing for a reprieve you get from no source other than K.O. Bailey's turntable. You want a pounding rocker of a record, a rip it up song that will rattle your world and, you, and the bedroom you share with your dad and your brother. You want to hear a song that will make you feel glad all over by the Dave Clark Five. If you have any spare change, 
Your spare time is spent leading over a jukebox, your community iPod, holding up to, oh man, a hundred songs. 50 hit records and their B-sides. You're in the Roaring Twenties Pizza Parlor in Red Bluff, California, or the Island Lanes in Alameda, or best yet, the coffee shop where your mom or your dad work. And right there in the booth is this little satellite version of your very own jukebox. And God bless if your parents don't slide over a 25 cent piece so each of you can pick out a song, one play for a dime, three for a quarter. Your sister, she punches in F7 for a trip to Motown. Your brother, E12 for a ride in a little deuce coupe. But man, you keep flipping those framed pages inside that little dome inside that little crystal ball into bang there you find them D C five and for two and a half minutes you run off to a little place down the tracks and the name of the place is I like it like that time is not told by watches or clocks but by whatever is on TV after Marshall J. in the cartoons, you go to school. Wednesday and Thursday nights, Batman tells you it's 7.30. Sunday dinner is history in time for a show broadcast from New York City, bearing the name of an odd-looking, funny-sounding newspaper columnist who week after week books the acts from around the world that define the cultural zeitgeist, a barometer of the national taste and mood. Now, for some, it's the dance troops from Russia. For some, it's the little mouse puppet from Italy. But for you, it's the bands. For you, it's the music who provide the sound you need so you can stomp your feet, the song you need so you can rock your head, and the music you need so you can roll your soul in abandon. And why? Why do you need this music so? Because on a specific day, a definitive moment in the history of the world, in November of 1963, a terrible storm pounded your classroom and your town and your country. And for weeks and for months, for the longest time, your heart and your world have been wrapped in black and the head of every single person you look up to is still bowed in mourning. It was the bleakest winter of your discontent, but then mourning became mourning as the sun rose in the east coming out of England. So many of those Sunday night bands were from England, four guys for three weeks in a row in February. Then in March, the Dave Clark Five for two weeks in a row. And then some other UK band. And then the Dave Clark Five again. And then another UK band, and then the Dave Clark Five again, and then another UK band, the Dave Clark Five again, another UK band, on and on, it went as advertised. We were being invaded. And our shores were spontaneously welcoming these Brits. Like centuries before, when the English brought enlightenment to the Dark Ages with not just Shakespeare, but with Ben Jonson and Thomas Kidd and Christopher Marlowe, the pantheon of literary sensations. This was a pop reprise of our mother country's gift to humanity. They forgave us our revolution by starting up another. The Red Coast replaced by lads in matching suits and armed with guitars and drums and an organ and a sax. The result was more than just audiences filled with screaming teenagers and schoolyard arguments over who was better, this quintet or that quartet from the northern part of the Queen's Isle. No, the true product, the true product was joy, unparalleled unstoppable, undeniable joy, the joy to be alive, the joy to be young, the joy to get a sun-marked transistor radio for your birthday so you could carry the British invasion with you, the joy as Ed Sullivan introduced the boys so you could sing along and pretend to play along, the joy that gave permission to believe that any way you want it, that's the way it will be. Youth and glory are fleeting. Lust lasts but a thousand days. But joy is eternal, said the old lady from Cleveland. Those years passed in the wink of an eye, but that joy is still in the heart. 
It's in the sinews. It's in our human genome, pounding out in 4-4 time the message that to be joyful is to be alive, and joy was in the music of the Dave Clark Five. The Dave Clark Five were sensations in particular ways, not the least of which was their eschewing of animals or minerals in their choice of name. <laughs> the Dave Clark Five were one of the few British bands of the day that never replaced their drummer. I mean, what would they have been called? True, the quintet never became household names, but they did display an unforgettable, if simple, mise en scene. Rick Huxley on bass, blonde Lenny Davidson on guitar, Dennis Payton on tenor sax, though on TV a baritone, so he would look cooler. And how we miss him? As well, we miss Mike Smith. Lord. Lord, how we wish he was here tonight, standing behind his organ with a perfect dance hall screech to his vocals. And let's see, who else was there? Oh yes, oh yes, Dave Clark on drums, blasting with so much power and elan, you'd stomp your hands and clap your feet if you could. The Dave Clark Five achieved the requisite feats of pop sensations. 15 consecutive top 20 hits. Six sellout tours of the United States. 18, 18 appearances on The Ed Sullivan Show. They sold out Carnegie Hall for 12 performances over three days. Now, what was in that set list? And you may think the band made two feature films, but it was only one, titled Catch Us If You Can in the UK, but called Having a Wild Weekend in the United States. A brilliant marketing decision, you must admit. <laughs> And speaking of brilliant decisions, in the business of show, here's something that will give most of the people in this room a headache when they hear it, because they are going to slap themselves upside the head at the news. Dave Clark never ever signed a piece of paper giving someone else his publishing. <laughs> He never had to write a check to buy back his publishing. I... He has always owned his own publishing. Now, is there a Hall of Fame for that? <laughs> Music reaches the soul. The Dave Clark Five lifted ours with a concussive beat and a reverb tremulo echo chamber of a sound, the Tottenham sound, from Lansdowne Studios in Holland Park, London, that commanded you to lean over from the back seat the moment you heard the rumbling percussion of the Dave Clark Five on the radio and commanded you to yell at your dad, turn it up, turn it up, dad, this is my favorite song. And he said, why, why, this ain't music, this ain't music. <laughs> and you say, oh yes, yes it is, dad, yes this is music, it's the Dave Clark Five. And this song, this song, is going to take our confusion and our sadness, our loss and our despair. It's going to take all the bleak days we've been through and all the heaviness of our hearts. This three minute record is taking our joylessness and smashing it to pieces, to bits and pieces. So turn up the radio, Dad! Before we go into that tunnel and lose our AM signal which is also true for satellite radio. <laughs> Dave, Mike, Dennis, Lenny, and Rick voluntarily called it quits in 1970. You did not read that headline. But their records still jump out of any speaker and are still good to kindle a party fire. In fact, the next time your New Year's Eve shebang ain't banging, we'll put on the Dave Clark Five string of hits on shuffle mode, and I guarantee you that everyone in that room will get up and dance. Everyone will get up and sing, because everyone knows all the words. And how is that? Because over and over and over again, the Dave Clark Five made a joyful sound. I said over and over and over again, the Dave Clark Five made a joyful sound. Over and over and over again, the Dave Clark Five made a joyful sound.
It is an honor to witness and announce the following. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame hereby inducts as members the Dave Clark Five. Got three. <laughs> I just want to look at it for a minute because it's been a long time. Um, this week, Saturday the 8th of March, we came to New York. 1964 was the 8th of March, and we were on the Ed Sullivan Show. Then, that week, we're invited to come here. Ooh. Still in March. And we sat up in one of those boxes up there. I think it was that one in the corner. Beware. And I think Ella Fitzgerald was on, on this stage. But unfortunately, the curtain caught fire. And we had to evacuate the building. But ever since then, it's been a fantastic journey. I just would like to thank my daughter Kelly, who's having a baby scan today. Jessica, Sarah, my sons Grant, Josh, Scott, and last of all, Max from Bedford School. Get on with your homework. And I'd like to thank America for making us feel welcome. We thank you for this award. Thank you. Lovely job, Len. I wish I hope I can do as good. I really do. I'm so grateful. I'd really, well, I'd like to thank Anne, my wife, for really bringing back the Dave Clark Five to me after we quit in 70, I got a bit moody. She dragged out all the stuff, all the memorabilia, it's on the walls. You can't forget this, she said. This is, look. It's not Sharon Osbourne, that one, redhead. And that's, and Dave for, really, for pushing us, pushing us, push, push, push. We're gonna be famous. We were, we are, bless you. Do I get one? Oh, yeah. bless. <laughs> ah! They have your names on them. Great. Lenny. Thank you, Tom, for your very generous introduction. I feel like I'm at the Oscars. Close. <laughs> we. We are honored to be inducted into the American Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and especially by such a respected movie icon. But deep down inside, I believe Tom is a rock and roller at heart. I firmly believe that without American music, there would not have been the 60s, 1960s British invasion. We were inspired and influenced by Elvis Presley, Little Richard, Jerry Lee Lewis, Bats Domino, Sam Cooke, Ray Charles, to name but a few. What an amazing array of talent to get one's creative juices flowing. The DC5 started out as a live band inspired by these American legends. We're privileged to be here tonight 
along with all the amazing fellow inductees. They say, if you can remember the 60s, you weren't there. <laughs> but I can tell you, I would not have missed it for the world. I wasn't the world's greatest drummer. I was certainly nobody rich, but I, I didn't do too badly. Making music, which is something I really enjoyed for the fun of it. The DC5 records were made to make people feel good, and you have certainly made us feel good here tonight. The DC5 was originally formed for the fun of playing the music we all enjoyed. Each of the boys had his own special talent, but it was a combination that really made it work. It was not just the Dave Clark Five, it was Mike, Dennis, Lenny, Rick and Dave. It was the five individual talents that made the DC5 so successful. I just happened to be the guy at the front there are some people behind the scenes that never get recognized. Loyalty is something money can't buy. I would personally like to say a big thank you to my business colleague and friend, Colin Newman. For his unfailing loyalty, support and friendship, which is rare in this crazy profession. Colin has been with me right from the very beginning. Thank you, my friend. The past two years for me have been difficult and very, have been for me difficult and very personal. I sadly lost my beautiful sister, Anne, and then Dennis Payton, ZC5's great multi-talented sax player, passed away just over a year ago, and now Mike. Dennis is represented here tonight by his two sons, Lee and Scott. I know your dad is very proud of you and we'll be thrilled that you're here tonight. I would like to take this moment on behalf of the DC5 to thank Dennis for his beautiful friendship and for being a big part of our lives. Five years ago, Mike Smith broke his neck in a tragic accident which left him paralyzed. Mike tried desperately to be here tonight with his wife, Charlie, but sadly, he passed away just a few days ago. But at least he will, he, uh, but at least he knows he's a Hall of Famer. <laughs> Mike, you are with us in spirit, my friend, and always will be. Mike was one of the great 60s rock singers and an integral part of the DC5, an incredible talent that will be greatly missed. What Mike and Dennis achieved, along with Rick, Lenny and I, will now live on forever, for future generations, thanks to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's so sad for all of us to lose loved ones. So I'd like to ask you, if I may, to give them all the biggest applause because I'm sure they can hear us and let them know that they are still part of our lives. Music has always been my passion. 
I feel blessed to be a part of an industry that allows dreams to come true. Not only for me, but for many people here tonight. That's the one thing that makes our industry so exciting and so special. When all else fails, there's always music. It's universal, unconditional. It comes with no expectations, reminds us of the past, speaks to us of the future. And our great industry does have a lasting future, even in this new fast-moving technological age. Great music never dies. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is a great testament to that. I would like to say a big thank you to all of our American fans. You've always been in our hearts. And to all the board of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, including everyone that voted for us. Without you, we would not be standing here tonight. Thank you, Tom. And finally, I'd like to say it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. But you've certainly made us feel glad all over here tonight. Thank you for making this such a very special evening. Thank you. Fasten your seat belts, making your own very particular joyful sound. To honor the Dave Clark Five, ladies and gentlemen, at one time, if I had been lucky, one of the most beautiful Mrs. Tom Hanks's you can imagine, but I'm not complaining, Joan Jett. Hi, everybody. Don't be shy. Speaking of the Dave Clark Five, I want to call Dave in here right now. Come here, Dave Clark, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, Dave. Dave, I was reading the biography of all the fellas in your group and uh, noticing that uh, 
All of you had some pretty interesting jobs before you started singing. Why don't you tell them about it? I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, well, I had a job as a film extra and stunt man. That's yeah. equivalent to a T-boy in a television studio. <laughs> um, Rick was an abstract lighting designer. Dennis was an electronics engineer. And Lenny was a progress clerk. And Mike progress. was a correspondent in a finance company. That's the one I want to ask you about. As a matter of fact, I want to call Mike in here right now. Find out. Come here, Mike. Mike. Now, finance collector. That means debt collector, right? People who owe bills. <laughs> now, how, how good a nice-looking teenage idol like you get into a business like that? No, well, all I did was write the letters. And then I got somebody else to go around and get it. I didn't. <laughs> well, there you go. From debt collector to teenage idol, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mike Smith and Dave Clark. And Dave Clark Five. Thank you, fellas. You're just fantastic. and John Fogarty, yeah.